Um, I welcome um, members to the fifth meeting of the Devolution for Others Powers Committee of 2016. As usual, can I remind members to switch off their phones or put them in a mode that we can't be interfering with our business. Um, we have apologies from Alison Johnson. Uh, the first item today involves the consideration of a letter from Rob Gibson, MSP, detailing the Rural Affairs Climate Change Environment Committee's view of the Crown Estate Draft Memorandum of Understanding and the Draft Transfer Scheme. It may be appropriate, given that the same convener is a member of our committee. Uh, Rob, would you like to make any comments? I, I would indeed. Uh, I think that uh, what we've uncovered, of course, is a Memorandum of Understanding, which is not a legal document, but is a means of... Uh, uh, <coughs> working between uh, the Treasury or the UK Government and uh, the Scottish Ministers. Um, but nevertheless, it throws up many, many questions which we need to bottom out. And uh, it appears as though to us that there hasn't been uh, a lot of discussion about this and the detail till very, very recently. So it, it asks the question, in my view, uh, given the number of uh, points that we've made here about how we are going to suggest uh, this process goes forward and that uh, we need to find a way uh, to make sure that uh, the Scottish Government understands that uh, the Parliament needs to know a good deal more about the process and its involvement because the scheme as laid out uh, is going to come into effect after the uh, due date. But... Um, our Parliament will be dealing with aspects of the Scotland Act if it's passed after the election in May, and that we need to actually have a, an early ability to have an influence over that. So uh, the pr process that my committee has put forward would have to be taken forward by a successor committee or committees in order that the Scottish Parliament has input to and can question, A, the Scottish Government, and B, uh, the, the UK government and it's essential that we do given uh, many of the details in here which are as yet unclear. Okay, well, yes, obviously your letter lays out a number of areas uh, Mr Gibson about wh the, for, for this committee to consider um, and one of the issues which uh, certainly is clear to my mind that in, in due course there will be a statutory instrument at, in, at the UK parliament approving this but there's no at this stage no role for the Scottish Parliament in approving the statutory instrument establishing the scheme and I thought one of the things we should be certainly considering is what role the Parliament would have in the future on any successor committee in that. Davis Scott. Yeah, I agree with that convener I thought the um, Mr Gibson's remarks were entirely spot on it seems to me occasionally this is a memorandum of non-understanding rather than a memorandum of understanding but the um, I, I wonder in, in the correspondence you're planning to initiate convener you'd also uh, look to uh, ask uh, our government here in Scotland about its policy in relation to the transferee body in other words what will take over and run the crown estate once the um, once the transfer does take place uh, my principal um, uh, interest in that is actually double devolution and how that will uh, be taken forward for the islands um, who as you'll recall from the Smith Commission set out very clearly what uh, the further aspirations they had in this area and that seems to me to matter simply because um, there isn't much point in having a transfer and then transfer again and there may be a, a mechanism to look at that carefully when the government have a, when whatever government we have at that point has the opportunity to uh, consider that no doubt in conjunction and in consultation with the affected local authorities. Okay, that's a reasonable point. In which case, given the contents of the, the letter from the Rural Affairs and Climate Change Committee, etc., um, do we agree that there are a number of issues in there that we are required to address in regard to letters to Her Majesty's Treasury, uh, the Scottish Government, and the Crown Estate? And uh, in drawing these letters together, that um, the Deputy Convener Duncan McNeill and I should sign them off when the clerks have prepared them. Is that a reasonable position for the committee to accept? I thank you, colleagues. We now move into private. But next week, just before we do that, um, next week we'll consider uh, further draft reports on the Scotland Bill and post-study work visas um, in private next week. Thank you very much. We now move into that private session.